show. It's great to finally meet you in person because this is how we meet each other in person nowadays through Zoom. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization and what you're passionate about? Okay. Um, Well, let's see. How far back? How much time should I give it? Um, (laughs) I don't know. 20 minutes or so? It's like, it's up to you. Whatever you think would appeal. I'm I'm an old dude, so I could go on for going Oh, me too. I could just go on forever and ever, so. (laughs) Okay. Well, let's see. Um, I um, got out of the Air Force, went to work for writing code for an insurance company. Um, That sounds exciting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It was a bit cloistered and a little bit boring. Um, And um, while I was, uh, I decided to get out of there and work for Tektronix for a while and um, uh, decided I had to start my own business. Nice. Um, I started pestering my then girlfriend um, about a couple of business plans. One was for a, a, um, uh, a single station CAD CAM system, mm-hmm. uh, which would have been um, you know the the CAD system. I can't, I can't drawing a blank right now. And right. the other was for the for an online encyclopedia. And uh, my girlfriend said after after a while she said I'm tired of hearing about it. I don't know which you should do. Stop asking me. All I know is. <laughs> That that CAD system doesn't sound very exciting, but the encyclopedia sounds like a lot of fun. Nice. And I had to sort of say, yeah, you know, you're right. So I uh, launched the world's first online encyclopedia in 1981. Whoa! Uh, it was a um, horrible money loser. Um, but, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> But we added social features um, pretty quickly, and uh, that saved us. Um, this is like this is like pre-web. How did you do this on the, without? Did you have your own? Was there a, its own? Did you have your own interface, or was it? This meeting is being recorded. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yeah. Was it? The, did you have your own client? I mean, how did you? How do people connect to this encyclopedia and, oh, and look at it? it? You know, back in those days, everything was text, right? Yeah. So you just um, somebody fact, just telnet it in. Is that is that the way it worked? It it was it wasn't even telnet. It was just you know it was dial up, async, um, and uh, you know in fact um, three hundred BPS was the new new thing when I started. Oh wow, God! I remember those days. That was a long time ago. And, and then went up to 1200 a year or two after that. But um, yeah. Um, so you've been an entrepreneur for a million years, basically. Basically. That's how yeah. I like to say it. It's prehistory. <laughs> yes. Um, we, yeah, we started out with cold fired computers. Um, but um, yeah, so we launched Delphi, um, built it. It was pretty, pretty quick, quickly profitable, um, mm-hmm. sold it to Rupert Murdoch in 1993. Nice. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> I retained a license to the host technology, um, launched a second business, which we then merged with another, uh, business and sold to NTT Vario. Mm-hmm. That was 1998. Um, and so 98, I found myself with time on my hands and decided to write a book about, um, how to bring accountability back to this new thing called the web. Wow. Because Cause it needs know, it. Believe me. It well, needs yeah. it. <laughs> in, in, well, at Delphi, you know, you, you had up to six usernames. You didn't have to na- use names that Suggest, suggested your real identity. Nobody got to know who you were, but right. you were accountable. So if you dealt drugs, which people did do, um, you know, the, every now and then the DEA would show up in our office and, and say, hey, we think this user is stealing, you know, meth. And we'd say, yeah, okay, what do you want us to do? And they said, well, let us know who it is. You got a court order? Do we need one? We're the DEA. Yeah, you need a court order. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and um, so yeah, or you know, we had some some uh, asshole. Excuse me. Uh, some... <laughs> That's all right. Obviously, you have strong feelings about this, so it's all well, good. <laughs> we, we we had you know we had we had libel issues. Of course, people would defame each other, and or there was fraud. People try to scam each other online. Oh, yeah. and... People people think that the that the the flame wars and the trolling that are that's going on today that's nothing compared to what it was like back then, right? Especially with exactly. that and Usenet and exactly. other places. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. And and uh yeah well if you showed up with a court order we would disclose I mean a legitimate court order um we would disclose um who uh, was bad mouthing you um or scamming you or whatever right. um, you know um but until then you people knew only as much as you just dis- chose to disclose about yourself so anyway right. fast forward to the web and it's you know um well you've seen the everybody's seen the peter steiner cartoon right on the mm-hmm. internet nobody knows you're a dog which that's we've right gotten plenty of use out of uh uh, Peter says that uh, we're we're one, one of the very very few people who actually pays royalties for that cartoon. Um, wow! Are you <laughs> seriously? <laughs> That's what he says. I actually have a neighbor here, a friend actually, and also an investor, um, who um, who knew Peter, and and we ended up corresponding. Um, he's you know what are these NFTs? You know, <laughs> somebody wants to buy an NFT. Vaporware, man. They're vaporware. <laughs> so you can imagine explaining NFTs to. Oh, I got another story. Non-existent tokens. Any speaking of speaking of, of such uh, um, uh, cognitive dissonance, um, when we launched the encyclopedia, I licensed the text from a guy named Max Shapiro, who was in his 80s, the uh, um, publisher of the Cadillac Modern Encyclopedia. And at one point he said, you know, Wes, I'm really excited about this. and I wish you well, but I don't think computers can handle letters. They just handle numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Max, you know, like, thank you, for your, thank you for your concern. We'll find a way. <laughs> That's like the famous uh, Bill Gates quote, or uh, only need five computers, or somebody. I forget who said that, but yeah, and, 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 predictions and so are great. Nobody's going to need more than six hundred forty k. That's right. That's right. That was that prediction. So, I love it. So, so, so this is the that's the genesis of all this. Is this authenticity? Yeah, yeah the authenticity I mean, that you well, were looking at it at, with Delphi, right? That plus a um, a, a lunch that I had um, with um, actually a, a colleague of my daughter's. My daughter had been uh, telling me as I'm writing this book, I'm starting to write quiet enjoyment. She's, Dad, it's PKI. You know, to pay attention to PKI. And I said, mm-hmm. Yeah, P- I'm I'm familiar with PKI, and here's why. You know, here's why it just doesn't scale. It just, you know, it, it's it's not practical for Mac, mass deployment. Said, Talk to my friend Mickey. So mm-hmm. I had lunch with her friend Mickey. And, you know, we're both kind of talking each other into it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I walked away from that. I said, you know, Sarah, I think you may be right. We can do this with the AI. Um, so that's what the book book is quiet enjoyment. I think I, I think I'm uh, uh, promoting it behind myself there. Um, I see. Don't don't get Norteld, which is an interesting interesting title. <laughs> Nortel is I, that story is so, you know jaw dropping. That's what an overused phrase, but boy, there is. It was the apple of its day. It mm-hmm. was one of the most valuable companies in the world. Hundreds Absolutely. of billions of dollars of, of market cap. And it vanished in the Canadian equivalent of chapter yeah. seven. And their stuff uh, is still out there to this day. It's everywhere. It's deployed. Uh, well, it's not supported, but it's deployed. It's out there. 
it's it's out there and it's it's uh, also found its way into the um the assets of none other than Huawei yeah yeah that's in fact what happened to them they basically had all their intellectual property available to any of seven usernames and all you had to do is get one of those usernames and suck the stuff down and that's what Huawei did mm-hmm I guess this is on the record, isn't it? But it's true. So. <laughs> no, it's you absolutely you true. You can't argue with the facts. It's, it's, it's absolutely true. So yeah. anyway, where was I? Um, but, so this was uh, this is what made, what drove you to what you're doing today. So the reliable ID. Okay, tell tell us about that. Tell us about that startup story. Well, reliable identities is is um, one of a number of enterprises that's licensed that work uses our platform. Mm-hmm. So the platform company is really the Authenticity Institute, mm-hmm. Inc. That's the commercial enterprise. And then, you know, it's a, a PKI, so it has to have a certification authority. And that has that takes the form of a municipality. Um, there's a story behind that. Um, uh, I... Uh, some people at the ITU learned that um, I was work. I was writing this book, and they were creating something called the World E Trust Initiative, which was a global PKI, much mm. like what I was advocating. So they uh, invited me to work with them. Something we really need, by the way, desperate well, for. Well, we're 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 delivering it. I, I, you know, we're doing it. We're doing it. Nice. Um, um, anyway. I worked with them for a couple of years until um, the project got more visibility within the ITU and, and um, it's presented to the member states. And they said, let's see if we have this straight. You want to create a um, global certification authority and all our national CAs are going to be subordinate to it. Uh-huh. Um, and said, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And so what does that imply about our sovereignty? And we said, well, you know, um, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and basically they said, pull the plug on that thing right now. <laughs> so. Um, I guess you should have had a better answer than that. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't the one who was actually making the presentation. That was Hamadoun Touré, who ended up being the secretary general of the ITU. Wow. Uh, we were very surprised that he got elected to that position. But it was Hamadoun Touré and Alex Natoko. And these guys very bravely um, took me aside and said, we don't want this to die. Um, we want you to, you know, can you take this on? I said, yes. Um, but I want it to take the form of a municipality because, mm-hmm. because a, a city is a kind of place where anybody, you know, cities don't have legislatures and bureauc- well, they have bureaucracies, but they don't have layers. Depends on the city. <laughs> well, but compare any, any city to any country, right? And consider the, um, likelihood that your voice can be heard in its governance, right? Oh, yeah. It's definitely much more likely to be heard in a city context than anything more hierarchical. Yeah. Even if you're in Tokyo, City Hall is, you know, an hour away, right? Yeah. Um, Whereas, you know, if if it's a national government, you know, there are legislatures, there are, you know, there there are all kinds of... Layers upon layers of hierarchy that you have to get through. And you want to get heard. And, and the thing is, these days, what you were refering to it before, meeting face to face, we're face to face, you mm-hmm. know? We this don't is really face to face today. Yep. Yeah, this is face to face. So I can go to City Hall in an instant and I can participate. I got to show up for a hearing and, and complain about, you know, the potholes in my road or, or my bandwidth. Um, And so that's why I felt it needed to be a municipality. Um, Natoko didn't care for the idea initially. And I said, well, you know, you want me to take it or don't you? Um, 
And so actually he, he quite warmed up to the idea. Nice. So anyway, March 7th, 2005, the city of Osmio was chartered at ITU headquarters in Geneva. Um, and um, that's our certification authority. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we, um, we have a, our, we call it PKI DR, PKI done right, um, in that it solves a few problems that have, first of all, it's designed to be universal. Uh -huh. One universal ID certificate, don't care right. who you are, where you are. It's, and it carries with a, a measure of its own reliability. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, NIST. NIST has started their um, 800-63 identity reliability program, where mm -hmm. basically you, you rate the reliability of an identity claim. And their sources of what I call EOI, evidence of identity, are pretty good. But then they sum it all up in a score of one, two, or three, you know. Right. One being self-asserted, meaning it's useless. Mm -hmm. Two being such a wide range that it's virtually useless. And three means okay, you can rely on this identity claim. Wow, that's a, that's a very small group to choose yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> so our system is called Osmio IDQA Identity Quality Assurance. Um, it um, we met, we rate an identity claim in eight different metrics, each on a scale of zero to nine. So you add them up, you've got an aggregate score of zero to 72. Um, and when it's the scores reported, it's the individual scores that are reported. So mm -hmm. for instance, you know, um, if you're running a social network for children, that second metric, which is quality of enrollment practices, is particularly important because you want to know that it's really an 11 year old girl and not a 40 year old creep. Right. Um, whereas if you're running a, um, an online commercial real estate auction, uh, then metric number seven is particularly meaningful to you because you know, that is a degree of assumption of liability. So you want to know that if, if some uh, person using a fake ID makes a winning bid on an $80 million office building that, um, and you take it off the market for a month and a half and incur all the expenses associated with that, that there's a bond behind the identity right. that you can make use of. Right. So that's why the reporting the individual components is important. Different metrics are more meaningful than different. But it depends. It sounds like it depends on the use case, right? It depends exactly. on the site. That, okay. Exactly. So there's that. There's also the fact that our um, identity CA is designed so that um, identity information isn't part of the database. Mm. So. Um, basically you have a certificate serial number, public key, um, IDQA score, um, and one other thing, I forget what it is. Um, those are the only things in the database. Oh yes, the, I, the, the identity of the attestation officer who is mm. responsible for creating your IDQA score. Ah, so, okay. So if some dictator shows up and says, I have a, this court order from my kangaroo court, my personal court, saying I want to know who's been criticizing me in public, um, the, the attestation officer can say, well, sorry, but I'm not going to honor that court order. I don't consider it legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is no way for the dictator to find out who it is that's been critical. Fantastic. Um, so um, we call that, we actually have a, 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 a patent in the works for that. Uh, it's nice. called the Internet of People Protocol. I love it. 
So how, how does somebody start using the system? Like, are you using, who's using it now? Like who, who's implementing uh, virtually it? Virtually nobody. Okay. <laughs> well, you're just, you're just starting off, right? I mean, how long yeah, have you been around? Starting off. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a huge lift. And the thing is, you know, we have, we really want to be independent of what we call Sillabandia, which is mm. Silicon Valley, the broadband and media industries. Sillabandia. I've never heard that term before, but I love it. <laughs> you know, you, you really, we're trying to deliver real privacy, right? You have, so Tim Berners-Lee has this, this um, thing called solid um, and a solid pod where you control the use of information about yourself. Right, uh, absolutely. I actually, I, I actually had a, a, a chat with him, um, name drop, name drop. Um, but I, I said, you know, we've added to it. Um, and what have you added? Well, we added legal components. Mm. So, you know, a fact is not subject to copyright, right? But a compilation of facts in the form of a reference work is subject to copyright. So we right. put them in a biographical reference work and give you the tools to copyright, claim copyright in your biographical reference work, which means it's, you know, it's that form of IP and it's also a secret. So mm -hmm. anybody wants to use it, there's either an implicit or explicit, explicit NDA saying, if you want to use information about me, you agree to, you agree that it's, it's, um, it's a secret. Um, and, um, and only to be used in the, uh, uh, the manner specified in the license that we're considering giving you. So, right. so, you know, I mean, doing that, you can imagine how, you know, Sillabandia feels about that. Right? <laughs> but we desperately need something like that because it's like they own all of our data. They own everything. And I remember yeah. back when Facebook's first little privacy explosion occurred and we were doing a project with the WEF about talk, thinking about personal data stores, right? So very similar yeah. to the solid concept. Yeah, you own your data and you can release your data to whoever you need to release it to. And you have to say, you know, I want to release my data to Amazon. I want to release my data to Facebook, et cetera. And it blew over so fast because people started not caring so quickly. That it's like, like, what needs to happen for people to start caring that their data is being, being managed by and collected by Silabandia? They do care but they don't think they can have it. A, they mm -hmm. don't trust Facebook. You know, right. they've heard, heard from Francis Haugen, et cetera. Um, they don't want to feel stupid by trying to find how to do it and manage it. Um, oh yeah, there's a, there's a, a big appetite for privacy, mm -hmm. but people have to believe that they can have it. Right. Well, there, there has to be an alternative available for them to that will be easy for them to say, like, I just flip a box, or click a switch or something like that and say, now my data is stored elsewhere, right. away from all of these, all of these harvesters. So here's where we get into why we are uh, a network of companies um, instead of just coming out with this in one big chunk. You've got to find the instances where the pain is sufficient to make people do things differently. Yeah. So, for instance, we have an enterprise called Authentimatch. Mm -hmm. um, it serves the, the dating site industry. I should say we have. Um, we had an entrepreneur for that, but um, I they didn't raise the money for it. They were unsuccessful raising capital. So um, raising capital isn't, it is, is difficult when you're thumbing your nose at Sillabandia, you know, because yes. every, 
Every investor has investments in Sylvania. That's right. Oh, you, you really want me not to go there? Come on. Right. Um, yeah, and also um, limitations on liquidity events, on, on exits. Like, yeah. we don't want to exit. We don't want people to exit to Sylvania. And if, you know, we can't prevent, if you control, if you have controlling interest in one of our authenticity enterprises and you decide you want to, Sell to Facebook, um, you know, probably the courts will back you up on that. Yeah. But we can guarantee that the next morning we're going to be forming a competitor to you. Yeah. Um, and, well, it defeats and- the purpose. I mean, that it's like you, 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 the purpose. The purpose is very important, but it's almost diff- it's almost impossible to get people to to push for it, right? Well, but see, this is, again, why we use this, we call it Hatsopolusophy, um, named after, are you familiar with? I read, no, I read that. I thought, okay, that's somebody Greek. That's obviously somebody Greek who is, that's based on. So George Hatsopoulos Hatsopoulos. was the founder of Thermo Electron, which is now Thermo Fisher. Mm -hmm. And he was a friend of mine. I have learned since he passed away. I've always been giving him credit for this strategy, but it's probably more his J- brother John that came up with this, uh, John Hatsopoulos. But, you know, so you build a, an engineering company and you have all these bright people coming up with ideas. Hey, boss, we ought to do this. We ought to, you know, use this, this core competency and IP and things and typically that is not typically always that's handled badly mm. right yep you know the the ceo says oh i love that idea write it up give me a business plan so they come up with a business plan you know thank you so much i'm going to put it right here on the shelf beside my desk and make sure that <laughs> you know nothing happens you're, or, you're, de- you're describing way too many situations <laughs> or or okay we're going to do this we're going to form a new business unit and you're going to report for to joe blow oh okay who's joe blow well he's the deputy assistant vice president to the such and such division and like you know zero autonomy yeah. Right. Zero cutting off it. So anyway, here's what the Hatsopolis brothers did. They said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to form a new corporation. Um, we're going to be your accounting firm and your uh, marketing agency. We're going to basically do the basic business blocking and tackling because you think you know how to do those things, but you don't. You're an engineer. You don't know how to do those things. Yeah. Um, but basically, your product strategy, your, your marketing strategy, your go-to-market, your everything, it's yours. And oh, by mm. the way, if we encounter each other in the marketplace, may the best man win. Right. So Exactly. You're building your own competitor, basically. And yeah, you know, they can, can, what is it? Can, cannibalize. Cannibalizing anyway, yourself, which is which is the right thing to do because you need that absolutely. you need that other group to focus on what they're what they're trying to do. And if they can absolutely. cannibalize each other, so be it. So there were there were two dozen thermo companies on the public markets, and every one of them was in the black. Mm. That's you know that's how and and Wall Street didn't know how what to make of it, um, <laughs> but. After a while, and, and as George, you know, got older and started losing it, um, you know, Wall Street decided, oh, this is this is a fantastic IPO machine. Let's <laughs> let's invent some new companies. You know, <laughs> like Harry, you got a, a a brother-in-law who's an engineer, right? You know, let's 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 invent a company and and make him CEO. You know. <laughs> First, they don't understand you. Then they belittle you. Then they join you, right? All right. So, <laughs> so anyway, Wall Street kind of took the idea and and dragged it through the mud. But originally, it was spectacularly successful. 
anyway, we're modeled after that. Right. So the okay. idea is we got a platform company, the Authenticity Institute. We have a city hall, that's the city of Osmio. Um, and we have about 100 and probably 112 business plans now. So who, um, who are you targeting? Like, who's your customer? Who are you trying to sell to? My customer is a prospective entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That is my customer. Okay. Um, I have, um, I have two that I would say up and running, um, you know, totally autonomous authenticity enterprises. Nice. Um, well, th three, if you include reliable identities. Um, one of them is, um, is called mail slot. Um, and uh, mail slot sells, um, phishing prevention to small to medium size companies. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the way that works is, um, a company, let's say, has 300 employees who, a company of 1,000 employees has 300 of them who um, are involved in tra transactional work in some way or other. And they have suppliers, distributors, et cetera, a total of 200 of whom, employees of which also are involved in these company to company transactions. Right. So 500 people need to be enrolled. When those 500 people are enrolled, they send each other digitally signed emails uh, using S-MIME protocol. And with the, the mail slot client, mail slot client takes all incoming mail and sorts it in one, either of two inboxes. One, the general regular inbox, and the other is the mail slot. You know, mm -hmm. a door with a slot, special mail goes in there. It's digitally signed you know, by Osmio. Uh, I mean, digitally signed by the sender who's using an Osmio certificate. Right. You can trust an Osmio, a, a signed message. You can trust anything that's in your mail slot and don't trust anything that's not in your mail slot. Mm -hmm. So all the spear phishing techniques, you know, finding out when the CEO is going to be tied up in an important meeting and sending his admin a, a, a um, flaming letter saying, you owe us $400,000 if we're not paid by this afternoon. We're going to court Monday. You know, um, you know the admin forwards that to the controller, says, uh, Joe, we got to pay these guys right away. <laughs> Boss is going to be so pissed. Mm -hmm. He gets a, you know, a subpoena. Um, anyway, that's of course how spear phishing works. Right. Um, and it works quite well for its perpetrators. Um, but you're banishing it basically, basically by using mail slot, mail slot banishes mail slot does. So that's run mm -hmm. by John King, not me. That's another part of the whole hats off philosophy idea is, you know, you got it. People have to, focus on what they're doing, you mm -hmm. know? And if I, if I tried to s serve all these markets, forget it. Um, so I have so if some big, so if some big enterprise from Silicon Valley came to you and said, Hey, we want to implement this, like say somebody like eBay, what would you say? I would say John King would like to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And John King would be quite happy to serve uh, your serve eBay and eBay's distributors. For, uh, no, but I mean, actually, not not eBay internally, but eBay buyers and sellers. Yeah. Um, well, eBay actually is the closest thing to a um, a, um, a a network with somewhat reliable identities you know you have mm -hmm. your reliability score and it's actually although the problem with ebay's system is that people come to trust it and then uh, let's say i um, i have uh, ten thousand um, 
and uh, I have a, 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 what do they call it? A feedback score of 99.5% or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I get a mail message from somebody I never ever heard of before and say, we want to buy your, your, um, your username. We want to buy your account. What are you talking about? I'm it's mine. I worked hard to get this. Yeah, this is me. Export. This is me. How would twenty thousand dollars sound? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when he's talking. <laughs> oh, that sounds kind of intriguing. And so they sell it, and next thing you know, they're selling two thousand imaginary laptops. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's ninety percent of the way there, but they need that identity certificate. They need Absolutely, that, they need that key pair. So, so what would we say if eBay came along? I said, you know, welcome. You know, <laughs> glad to work with you. Uh, I mean, would, would that be a good use case for your for your? You're saying that eBay, eBay is not very good because you're all they're already on the way to some kind of authenticity, but so who oh. else, who, who else? Well, I mean, the dating network I just mentioned, right? right? So oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's very important as well. Super authentic important. Match. By the way, yeah. there are websites for all of these authentic match, um, authentic match.com. Um, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, it, it's astounding how much, um, trust these participants, women, um, you know, how much they want to believe these guys, mm. you know, oh, I'm stuck on an oil rig out in the North Sea. I, I, but I got a vacation coming up. I so much want to come and see you, but I, yeah. you know, I just, right. And that's how it starts, but it doesn't, doesn't end with, the cost of an airline ticket, yeah. right? They end up parting with like hundreds of thousands. You know? So where do you where do you see yourself? So it's time to look like a futurist. Where do you see yourself in ten years? Where do you see this this company going in ten years? Do you think things are going to get better or worse? Or oh, security is going to get worse. We know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and and yet it will become more and more profitable. The worse it gets, the more profitable the security industry will be. Right. Um, my wife happens to be an investment banker and she serves exclusively security technology companies. Mm -hmm. And so I got a front row seat on this and, uh, you must be you seeing know, some really horrible things going on then. Well, as I, as I've said, it's, you know, it security technology is like the, um, the wrinkle cream industry, you know, <laughs> if, if anybody actually came up with a wrinkle cream that worked, that would be the end of the, the wrinkle cream industry. That's right. The industry would be gone. That's right. It's, it's the it's same with a lot of industries, I find. I, it's like they're all almost a lot of them are aspirational, right? They're like, mm -hmm. if, if we were to solve this problem, then this entire industry would just disappear overnight. So right. the, the industry itself has to self-perpetuate to not solve the problem it's supposed to be solving. Because if it did, then the industry right. would disappear. Exactly. What What is the weight loss industry going to do about Ozempic? Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I'm sure they're <laughs> burning the midnight oil. Think about that. Having strategy meetings. We've got to figure North. out a, some way around this thing. <laughs> it's working. My God, what are we going to do? <laughs> That's right. God, we, we, don't, we don't want anything to actually work. We just want people to keep buying our books and, and our, our plans and our apps and our this and our that. <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is the scenario they want to have confidence in. So board of directors ask the CEO, you know, our um, competitor just had a ransomware attack and dragged their name through the mud and cost them blah, blah. Um, or I just read this book, don't get Nortelt. Uh, and what are we doing about it, Mr. CEO? And CEO says, well, our CISO has told me this and this and this, I, but let's make sure that we cover that in the next board meeting. Go back to the CISO. CISO, what are we doing about this? 
He says, boss, you raised our budget, security budget 11% this year. You know, where we got these this widget and this widget added to our inventory. I don't know what else you want me to do. So he goes back to the board. Oh, we raised our budget 11%, you know. Oh, okay, well, I, well, that sounds good. What else am I supposed to say? Yeah, Right. exactly. So, so that's why, you know, there, there's a, a, a company, Tanium, um, ran full page ads in the Wall Street Journal last year saying security isn't working. Mm. And uh, boy, I snagged those ads. Um, and... Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing like testimonial power. It's not us saying this, it's them saying yeah. this. Well, yeah. um, and um, yeah, so I mean, okay, so for the dating site industry, we've got that solution for, um, I've got one for boards of directors, it's Authentris. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I discovered that, I mean, even MailSlot has, has a tough road to hoe because you're really asking the company to do things differently. Yeah. Ads would burn. And nobody wants to do anything differently. God forbid. <laughs> you know, it's, it's work, it's money, it's, you know, it's uncertainty. Yeah. Well, um, it's like buying insurance really. Right. It's like, they don't see, they don't see the, the upside. Like where is right. the upside until something horrible happens, then. Right. You know, if nothing horrible happens, they go, well, look at all the money we're wasting on this. It's like, come yeah. on. <laughs> These are table stakes. This stuff needs to be covered. They have to concern themselves with it. But so, but here's what <clears throat> we're speculating with Authentris. And I, this is the exception. I am Authentris. I'm, I'm doing this one. My, I'm the entrepreneur in Authentris. Okay. Uh, mostly because it's just, you know, giving this advice to boards of directors. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to actually do anything, right? Other than show up for board meetings. Right. Um, but the, the good thing about boards is that they have liabilities, they have responsibilities, you know, they know about security issues and they are concerned but they don't have to implement them. All they have mm. to do is say, you know, there's this thing called authenticity. Um, have you looked into that? And, oh, by the way, it's getting late. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, going back to Wichita, um, but we'll be back in a couple of months to see, you know, what you've done with authenticity. Right. You know, that's so why- So they get their marching orders from the board. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's why it, it just hit me one day. I said, the board, you know, they have liabilities. They worry about this stuff, but they don't have to do it. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're perfect. They're the perfect target for you then. Right. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been great. So um, if someone gets, wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Wes at ReliableID.com. Mm-hmm. And like you said before, your ideal client is an entrepreneur, someone who wants to be their own boss, has marketing experience in a target audience. So mm -hmm. someone who has speaks the language, um, understands the pains in that audience and has managed to generate a revenue stream in that audience. And no, no one from Silabandia need apply. Is that what you're saying as well? Oh, you know, refugees from Silabandia are most welcome. They'll have a, a, a an axe to bear, an axe to grind, grudge yeah. to bear, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I will put all the information on, on what you have in the show notes. And if anyone wants to get in touch with you, they can go directly to you. So it sounds good. Great talking sounds with you, man. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chris. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye.